Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Julie and you are currently watching the Common Design Mistakes series. Today we'll be tackling the home office. Or really, you can apply these tips to any room in your home that has become a makeshift office since you're working from home now. Many of you have been working remotely since the start of COVID earlier this year. You might have reluctantly made the shift from routinely going into the office, or you may have been overjoyed at the thought of zero commute. Many states, including California, are starting to see some normalcy again. Our restaurants are open, our bars, our malls. Many companies are still keeping their employees working from home because they're showing signs of pure productivity and it seems to be working well for them. I started working from home over 11 years ago. I had just gotten laid off from my job due to the recession and at first it was convenient. I was limited on funds to pay for office space because I just started my interior design business. While I made a ton of mistakes with my work from home setup along the way, I began to get really adept at carving out a dedicated studio space where I could be productive and efficient. For myself and my small team, I've learned how to creatively solve issues when it comes to ergonomic, space, and work-life balance, and I wanted to share my tips today with you. My goal for this video is to help you design a home office space that's comfortable and makes you feel energized, uplifted, and elevated to tackle a workday. Let's first start with your space planning needs. Grab a tape measure and measure the length and width and height of your room. Now that you have the proper dimensions, let's start planning the space. Start with the essentials like your desk, your desk chair, maybe a bookcase, a filing cabinet, and then we'll end with some of the decor and accessories, like an area rug and any decorative items that may inspire you. Once you lock down your floor plan, then you can start planning the design. The number one common mistake I see in a home office, your desk is too large for your space. Your job consists of spreadsheets and emails and every document you need to file is conveniently digital. But you have this huge executive desk with an L-shaped return and a hutch behind you. The most common mistake I see here is poor use of space. You first need to determine your needs. What do you do in a typical day? Does your work require a keyboard, two monitors, a mouse, a filing cabinet, or can you get away with a simple laptop? Do you require locked storage to safely file personal documents away? Do you need quick and convenient access to your projects? A too small desk could hurt you just the same if it can't hold your desktop, your notebook, and everyday supplies. I used to dedicate a tiny corner in my studio. I know Kelly, you'll remember. I mean, we literally were working on top of each other. I had my desk area, I had a huge drafting table, I had a bookshelf where I was keeping all of my library of design samples. Now that I figured out exactly how I work, I have streamlined that process and my studio space to house only my essential needs. As my business grew, my needs changed. I no longer hand drafted. I got savvier with my samples. I really don't keep any samples in house anymore. I order samples as new projects come on the board. I really have found a way to maximize my home office space so it suits my current needs. Understanding what your current needs are will help you identify the size, shape, and type of desk you need to free up the rest of the room for multifunctional furniture and decor. Think about how you intend to use the space and plan your room around it. Another common design mistake I see is placing your desk in front of a window. You're literally blocking the natural light that filters through your office. You might not even notice it, but the light actually reduces contrast on your monitor, making you squint more to read what's right in front of you. You need that natural light in your office to stay positive, alert, and happy, but you want that light to filter through your space and not on the computer screen. The fix? Simply arrange the placement of your desk and move it away from the window. If you must face the window, you can also combat this issue with layers of curtains like shears when you're not working and lined panels when you're in front of the monitor. Placing your desk in front of a wall. If you've watched my feng shui series, you'll know this one is a really huge no-no. Your desk needs to be in a command position, which basically means you should be facing the entry door. You need to be able to see who's coming in and out of your home office. This puts you in a power position, usually floating in the middle of the room. 
If a window is behind you, place a console, credenza, or dresser behind you for full support. Here's an easy fix if you place your desk in front of a wall. Turn your desk around and instead face the entry door. You want to feel good about seeing everyone who comes in and out. There's no surprises. If you don't have space for this, use the wall that shares the entry door so you can still see who's coming in and out. Another common design mistake I see is poor lighting in your home office. Lighting is one of the most fundamental aspects to a functioning home office space and how the office is lit from the bulb color to the correct wattage that can easily make or break your space. If you've worked in a corporate office with overhead fluorescent lighting before, you'll know exactly what I mean. By 10 a.m., you're already squinting your eyes, exhausted from the harsh light, and by noon, you're ready to take a nap. Or worse, the room is too dark, which can ultimately affect your mood no matter what time of day you're working. The best lighting mimics natural daylight. I love the color of soft white LEDs because they're really easy on the eyes. Incandescent bulbs are also my favorite to take on this task. Daylight LEDs are a bit cooler, but work just as well. Everyone's needs are different, so if you lack natural lighting in your home office, invest in overhead lighting in addition to a desk lamp or floor lamp and wall sconces for layers of light. Now that I'm sure you're doing a little bit more video conferencing these days, you want to have that light hitting your face and not harsh light angled down right onto your head. Try out some different color bulbs and see how you feel with the new setup. Don't forget to place all your bulbs and switches on a dimmer. This will allow you to adjust the brightness in the room, especially when there's no set time when the workday is done. Another common design mistake I see is sourcing an uncomfortable desk chair. I was really spoiled at my first design job. Fresh out of trade school, I worked for a mid-size hospitality design firm and we were designing four and five star hotel resorts all over the world. Under the direction of their new HR manager, the employer had shelled out over $20,000 for these really fancy ergonomic chairs. The chairs had adjustable height and reclining options, lumbar support, breathable mesh backs, cushioned seats. It even came with a few different sizes for the variety of user weights and measurements. After you've sat on a $500 heavenly ergonomic chair, I mean, there's nothing like it. You have to be comfortable and your back is begging for proper support if you're going to be sitting on your desk for hours on end. Having an uncomfortable desk chair is like buying the wrong mattress, but you still insist on sleeping on it. Over time, your body will pay the price. Even if you don't spend $500 on it, do your research, source the best you can afford. After all, your productivity depends on it. Look to eBay, Facebook Market, or Ofra for really great deals on gently used ergonomic chairs. I found my husband's desk chair. It's an ergonomic Herman Miller for 20% off the retail price off of eBay. There's an office nearby that was downsizing and they just had a surplus of office supplies available and we just scooped that right up. Don't be afraid to source furniture at secondhand sites. Sometimes they're barely even used and you can get a bargain brand new. But if you insist on working with the chair that you currently have, at least spend $20 on a really great lumbar support to lessen the strain on your back. Let's move on to common decorating mistakes that I see in the home office. These tips are all about the decor. The number one mistake I see is a too cluttered desk. It's full of photo frames, inspirational quotes, your kids drawing of the day, candles, desk supplies. They might be cute to look at, but they're taking up valuable space on your workstation that should be primarily used just for work. Keep these items nearby for a jolt of inspiration, but not immediately on your desktop so you can access your files without any distractions. In this case, you can get a filing cabinet for storage or a bookcase for all of the pretty decorative items. You'll remember earlier in the year, I decluttered my entire home office. I found over the holidays, everything was just piling up. And as a new mom, decluttering was low on the list of priorities. I mean, I was taking care of a new baby. I had taken some time off, but by the time I got back to my projects, I mean, it was just so cluttered. The minute I purged everything that was unnecessary and cleared out my desk, it just felt so open and so inviting again. I like to have my essentials on my immediate desk, an L-shaped return where I house a tray to keep clients on the board. 
I have a dresser that stores my tech, craft, and filming gear. Two IKEA Calyx cubbies for my past client projects that I sometimes refer back to. And finally, two brass etages, which are bookshelves for the pretty decor. I put baby pictures on here, shelter magazines that I like to look at occasionally, but pretty much the bookshelves are for everything that inspires me. It sounds like a lot to fit into a really small home office space, but the trick here is to make use of all of that vertical wall space. You want to keep a mix of open and closed storage. Open storage so you can get to your files with ease, and closed storage so it doesn't look like a complete mess in there. Another common decorating mistake I see is forgetting about all your technology gear. A lot of home offices don't have enough power outlets to provide energy to all of your electronic devices. In order to prevent clutter from building up on your desktop, you need proper cord management, tech supply storage, and charging stations available and easily accessible. If you plug all of your devices into a multi-outlet extension cord and run these cords to your desk, it becomes a fire hazard and you can accidentally trip on them. Instead, use a pop-up countertop receptacle that is as discreet as it is minimal to eliminate this issue. Another common design mistake I see is designing a traditional office look. What does a traditional office look mean? Your home office doesn't have to feel corporate or stuffy with that huge wood executive desk and that massive leather executive chair. Unless that's your style, of course. Just like any other room in the home, your office should reflect your style and the energy of the mood you are trying to elicit in the space. Move away from large bulky furniture and source open-legged slim desks and light colored desks instead. The goal is to make the home office feel like a part of your home and not like you borrowed your corporate office's aesthetic. If you want to feel bright and happy, go for a white desk with a brightly patterned area rug underneath. Want a touch of glamour and fun? Try brass details like a full height bookshelf to showcase sentimental decor, plus it houses your office files. Remember to decorate your office space like you would any other room in your home, with your personal touches and a color palette that suits your aesthetic. This next one is one of the most common design mistakes I see and one that I hope you'll fix right after watching this video. Your bedroom doubles as your workspace. Feng Shui principles state that your place of rest and your place of work should be clearly delineated. This means no working in the bedroom and no resting in the office. Even if you don't subscribe to feng shui rules, sleep experts agree. The more technology you have in your sleep zone, the less likely you are to get a restful night's sleep. You want to keep as much active yang working energy out of the bedroom as possible. The fix is to use your dining room or living room as a multifunctional work from home office space instead and keep the bedroom just for sleeping. I have a ton of other videos on how you can create the ultimate work from home situation in your dining room and your living room. I'll leave the links for you in the description box below so you can take a look. Another common design mistake I see is that acoustics are an issue. You can hear your kids playing in the other room. The kitchen's exhaust fan is causing this buzzing sound on all of your Zoom calls. The TV sounds like someone else is sharing your office space. You hear the street noise, police sirens, construction next door. In essence, your office is not soundproof. The easiest fix is to pick a quieter room in your home that's away from all of the action. But if that's not possible, you can start with a solid wood door to block out some of that noise. Add more soft textures like curtains and drapery panels for window treatments. An area rug under your desk will help absorb more sound. Make sure it's low pile so you can roll your office chair right over it with ease. Upholstered wall panels, fabric wall coverings, and acoustical wall tiles can also help to absorb sounds. Use these elements as opportunities to help showcase your style and design your dream office space. And the last common design mistake I see 
is that your office doesn't feel inviting. It's cold, it's sterile, it's full of tech gear and nine monitors. There's a really quick fix for this one. Just add a plant or two or three. Bring life into the space with color, pattern, and always something fresh. In the end, you need to set up your home office space so it works for you and your functional needs. Unlike the kitchen where you cook, the dining room where you eat, the bedroom where you rest, Designing your home office can be a space that's uniquely yours and you don't have to design with anyone else in mind like your family, kids, or partner. Sit down and make a list of everything you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Then you can start looking for the optimum furniture pieces to support your needs. Pay attention to scale and proportion so you source exactly the right fit for your custom needs. You want a workspace that enhances your creativity, your productivity, and excites you every time you sit down to work at your desk. My morning routine consists of taking care of the baby, and when she goes down for her first nap, I can't wait to get to work. I've created a personalized home office space that makes me feel good about what I do day to day, and that is what I want for you. I hope you got some really good tips from today's common design mistakes for your home office. If you like this series, please give this video a thumbs up, comment below, and let me know if you have any questions or challenges when it comes to designing your home office, and I'll do my best to help you resolve them. We're taking a little break from the common design mistakes series for some fun holiday content, but we are not done yet. Please let me know in the comments below if there are any other rooms that you want to see common design mistakes for. I have the laundry room and utility spaces lined up. I'll be throwing kids and teenagers rooms into the mix. I'm really thinking about some of the most often used and under designed spaces. Don't forget to share this series with anyone who you know needs interior design help and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.